Hello and welcome to day one of week 10 of Split Tour, the 2019 OPL. It's Super Week! I'm Nick Nick by Richardson. I am joined by two of my favorite people. <laughs> Full stop. Unequivocal. Those at the desk can't hear me yet because they don't have their headsets on. Spawn, Rusty, Voice, how are you? Nervous? Little nervous? Bit. I'm not nervous. I'm excited. At all. You're, no, no, not at all. I'm not. I'm sick. I just like, I only, I, there's nothing in my life right now, Nick, apart um, from pain and suffering. Because of the sickness or because of order? No, because of the sickness. I love order. Okay, yeah. The, what do you mean? There's, no, there's I, no, okay. I no, genuinely love my game. I'm not nervous at all. This is, we can only play Mammoth Chiefs and Avant. This is quite possibly the easiest 3 0 <laughs> of my life. Uh, Rusty, how are you holding up? Uh, it's just been a big week, right? So I'm just excited to actually see it finally be played. The game's finally be played. Mm -hmm. It's been a big season overall, big year. So this week, being able to culminate it all with such a close ladder is just super exciting. Yeah, and I think people forget that. You know, these guys, even though we have, you know, a couple of 10-week seasons and, you know, a little bit of off-season tomfoolery when we go over to things like MSI and Worlds, like, this really is a year in the making. Mm. This is GMs out in, you know, October, November, trying to put their teams together, people training since December. Mm -hmm. So, you know, got to feel for the players that so many of these teams are locked in such a close struggle. And even towards the top of the ladder, like Chiefs aren't secured yet. They're going to have to try and get that sorted out yeah. today or tomorrow. Mammoth, Mammoth obviously Mammoth. pushing for that and also trying to stave mm. off a Bombers that is like really hot on their heels right Absolutely. now. So I think across the board, you know, even Legacy would love to grab a couple more wins and kind of right the ship just at the very end to kind of exit the league with a little bit of pride yeah. at the end of this weekend. So yeah, a big weekend for all the players involved. I think that's an interesting point. I'm sure standings will come up at some stage because that's what we're still talking about at the moment. But like a lot of the teams have agency and a lot of the teams are relying on others mm -hmm. with results, which is something that, again, makes this week super interesting for that alone. You know, teams like Chiefs, one win, Locks them in, yeah, right? yep. and that is it. They only need to win one game, but there's three games, and there's still a team hot on their heels who yep. don't want to lose. And you could follow that logic the entire way down, and like it's up to seven teams that still aren't locked. Well, let's take a look at that standings. We'll flip it around because we will head to the games after that. Uh, so, oh no, we'll take a look at today's games. There you go. Uh, so first up, it's Diwals versus Avant. Uh, Super Week, obviously, heaps of games. Mouth versus Order. Game number two, Chiefs versus Legacy for game three. Gravitas versus Bombers. Order, take on the Chiefs. And finally, Legacy versus Gravitas. It's hard to pick a banger because, there's, like you guys said, there is so much at stake. This is the weekend where it ends for three teams. Uh, and then, uh, and also just so dependent when we're heading into Gauntlet. And that's how I like to look at this week. Is This is where teams get to come together and just be big families. For example, <laughs> if you're an Order fan this week, yep. you also get to be a Die Wolf fan and a Legacy fan. Like, what more could you want? Absolutely. If you're an Avant fan or a Gravitas fan, you're probably barracking for the Chiefs and Mammoth to be able to pick up some big wins as well. This is when everyone in the OPL gets to come together and, you know, really show a united front. It's so true as well because it also, while, uh, while you get to barrack for teams that you don't normally, it also heightens the rivalry with those teams. Yes. Because you can be <laughs> yeah. supportive of when they do something good. But if they stuff, but if it, they up, stuff it up, uh, you hate them twice as much. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, let me tell you, like, I have never loved Legacy <laughs> as much as I have this week. <laughs> like what I did there. Uh, and, you know, similar with Die Wars. And I, I think it's, to be completely serious, like, the players are backstage and they're just so nervous because of like everything we're talking about right now. Like we've seen the OPL be so unpredictable for like three years mm. now that like literally anything can happen. It is down to the final three games that they each get to play. And we spoke about this last week, but like Mammoth was screaming during the AV Chiefs game next yeah. door to where we're sitting yeah. up, upstairs yeah. and like they're so into it. Now imagine that tenfold because it all matters, mm -hmm. right? So that's basically what this week is. Because I'll repeat it one more time, but the team that finishes first in the regular season mm. since we have introduced the gauntlet format has won the OPL. It's not like it's a small sample size. It's five of five. Yeah. Like, that is a huge amount of teams. And we've had some great teams come through the gauntlet. You know, we had the Chiefs in yep. 2017, maybe the hottest team in mm -hmm. the OPL at that stage, Couldn't running headlong into the Direwolves and still could not do it. Yeah. Uh, so it is such a tough task to go through the gauntlet and then to the top dog. So the Chiefs really want to secure that spot. Absolutely. It's ramping up from here. Let's take a look at the standings as they stand at the moment. Chiefs, as we've spoken about, top of the table. Mammoth second. Bombers third. Direwolves coming in at fourth. You've got Avant and Gravitas uh, there. Five and six. Order at seven. And Legacy at the bottom of the table at eight. So there's still a lot to play for. If you look at the wins... Uh, I mean, Avant, Die Wolves, Gravitas, Order, still 
at each other's throats. Yeah, that and of course Mammoth and Bombers one win apart from each other and it's not just getting to the MEO. Each place in the standings is one best of five less mm -hmm. that you have to play. It's one extra day potentially of preparation and one extra day of seeing your opponents as they play through the gauntlet. It may not do everything, but that does help. That's right, and that gauntlet is feeding towards MEO, which we could not be more excited about. This is part of the reason that everyone is feeling those nerves. Massive stage event at the biggest esports event of the year, the Melbourne Esports Open. Head to melbourneesportsopen.com.au forward slash tickets. And even as a man on the verge of death, please, of this plague that has infected me, yep. MEO is still the light at the end of the tunnel, Nick. The greatest city in the world, one of the greatest esports events. Yep. And there's just so much to do there. There is so much to do there. We will get to what you can do there, uh, I believe, after our first game. Give you a rundown of the weekend. What you'll be missing if you don't come along and what you can look forward to. Because you are coming. Because you're a big fan of the OPL. And that's why we love you. Something else we love. The Mac is champ select. Other people we love. Richard, Pulse, Cam, and Bryce. I don't have time to read no emails. Bryce. Accurate. How are you doing today, Bryce? How was your morning? Uh, late. <laughs> it was a late morning. Uh, yeah, Nick's alluding to the fact that I just I just didn't show up on time today. We had a little bit of a little bit of a shopping excursion this excursion. morning. Yeah. yeah, cheeky hour, fifteen minutes late. You know what can you do about it? Nothing. What I realized is parking prices are crazy. Yeah, I don't know if in Australia or Sydney or what, but like. Because I come from a small town in the UK where parking price would be like a pound fifty for like yeah, yeah, yeah. an hour and a half. Mm. And it was like sixty bucks. For like an hour and ten minutes. Yeah. Like the bracket between insanity. one and two hours was disgusting. Yeah, I definitely got uh, absolutely gooned. Uh, but then Nick saved me sixty dollars because he's an absolute chad. But that's fine. Yeah, that was insane by the way, but that's a story for another time, I think. Yes it is. It's a whole segment. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's get into uh, game one. We have a lot of games today. Yes. Six games, so we'll be casting three of them. I believe I have Rusty, because Spawn is on uh, the verge of death over there. And yep. uh, we have Direwolves and Avant. Um, this will be Avant's only game today. Uh, yeah, and the Direwolves, I believe, Wolves. as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. In terms of schedule, right, that's probably a pretty good thing. You start off the day, have the entire time to chill, and then get back-to-back -back games tomorrow uh, after seeing everybody play. So, yeah, yeah it's an interesting one, and that's hopefully these team can, teams can utilize. So Avant play back-to-back -back games tomorrow. Oh, no, 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 not back-to-back, -back, but they play, like, both their right, games right, right, tomorrow, right, right. yeah. Yeah, that's uh, the case with many of the teams today. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, not these two teams. Just have to focus on this one. Uh, Direwolves <coughs> starting off with a very much a shock ban. Uh, you mm -hmm. also notice specifically uh, yeah. with the lineups here, um, Chan Chuan in the bottom lane. Now, a lot of uh, LPL viewers uh, may recognize him from OMG. Esports. Also, OPL viewers, he's back. He was on Regicide back in the day. Played a couple of games under them with his other LPL counterpart now in like Love ZZR. We know him as ZZZ or Aries Sai, but yeah. he's over there now. And uh, yeah, the man has been floating around in Australia, I believe, for a couple of months based on the info mm. I've received. But yeah, given that AV, they had their little bit of a roster kerfuffle. Drag Koo, you, you saw, was playing top lane for the last couple of weeks and then Chippy's mid, shock all over the place, roster in shambles. Yep. This is a dedicated support with a ton of experience, both in OPL and in LPL over in China. So looking to solidify things towards the end of the split where they're only one point behind Direwolf, so they want to come out of the gate swinging. Absolutely. I feel like it's such a unique situation as well. Like how many times do you think of like uh, someone who's gone over to a region and then like a comeback, specifically like the LPL, right? Yeah. You know, because like the LPL imports a lot of different talent, but mm -hmm. never really like... It never sends leaves. them out. Yeah. <laughs> they just a vacuum of League of Legends. It's a black hole of yeah. players. Yeah. They, ju they just spit out like shells of people. <laughs> just yeah. Like, yeah, so no. he's escaped. He's yeah. escaped the black hole. He has. He has. He's uh, gone to. I mean, people and pro players talk about like the hyperbolic time chamber. You go to career in the off season, you come back, you're yeah. insane. Mm -hmm. He's done exactly the same thing here in the LPL in a yeah. competitive environment and coming back to the OPL. I think uh, a lot of eyes will be on him and how he meshes down the bottom side with Guncrab. Uh, my take, like big Alistar, big aggressive sort of support player mm. has been for a very long time. So, uh, yeah, meshing down with Guncrab is going to be super important for AV to pick up a win here. Yeah, that playstyle definitely would have synergized with OMG as well as a team. But let's get yeah. on some of these bans as well. So we already mentioned the Shark ban. Uh, Cassiope as well and Azir. So basically triple bans levied here at the mid lane. Avant banning away the, uh, the Yumi, the Rexon and the Corky, picking up themselves the Kaiser Trinal and now locked in the Camille, and Direwolves picking up the Silas, the Aatrox, and Zaya. Yeah, and this is sort of interesting. We have seen Trundle as kind of like the Sejuani answer for the last couple of weeks. A lot of people picking it into 
the boar, but this is potential like Silas jungle, Aatrox jungle, you're not really sure, but this could just be a straight up blind pick here for Miru and uh, yeah, rounding out the rest of that comp with potential mid laner and Camille, Chippy's big proponent of that champion, but standard 80 carries, nothing fancy as of yet between the two. Yep, Rakan also banned away here, Kiana ban as well towards Avant, and now looking towards uh, Fana ban against uh, Direwolves here. So, yeah, we'll see where the Silas goes. Uh, definitely can go into the jungle. Uh, also have the Aatrox, uh, also as a flex pick as well, can go into the top or mid lane. Played against my first Silas the other day in a, in a solo lane. Wasn't oh, yeah. It wasn't a great time. I felt like it was the first time in like League history where I was up against a champion where I had like zero outfit potential. Like, if he wants to kill me, I was dead underneath tower. What were you playing? Uh, Leona. <laughs> 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 now... <laughs> This conversation. I feel can like just every end. other man. <laughs> we can just end it here. It don't like. It's fine. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Leona. Okay, sure. Yeah. Any other matchup would have been fine. Yeah. Rise ban here against Devon and uh, Talia will be the final ban as well against uh, Direwolves. Yeah. So uh, Talia ban kind of removing a potential uh, like hard counter jungler. You know, Talia very long range. It's something like the Trundle look you throw out there. It's hard to deal with, but also it's just one of those lanes you can lock it in. And in most standard matchups, she just forces priority mid lanes. Mm -hmm. So makes a lot of sense. These supports also make a lot of sense, right? Like Kaisa Nautilus is becoming one of the premier lanes of the bottom side, only answered realistically by like a, a Zaya Rakan or something like that, of course. When you are the Direwolves and you lock in Zaya blind, of course it gets banned away. Braum will be incredibly serviceable here, but uh, yeah, interesting ones locked in. Yep, Gragas as well to join that, and that will complete the Direwolves lineup. And uh, also with that Nautilus looking now towards the solo lane, that should be mid lane. Yeah. Shot getting himself his uh, final pick on red side. Not a lot of options open. You can see how, dig, uh, how deep he's digging, rather. Syndra's not a champion we've seen for wow. a long time, but like Maybe Corky, Talia, Rise, uh, Kiana, that's another three in the first phase band uh, away from the mid laner of AV here. So Dyke uh, Wolves having. An incredibly big strategy, very obvious. Just char target the mid laner, see how reach, how far he can reach down into the champion pool and uh, make something happen. Yeah, we also do know that Shock has very deep pockets. Yes. Um, at the end of the day, he's going to be able to play anything. You could put 10 bands against him, he'd be like, okay, here's, you know, Leo in the mid lane. Like, you know, Shock could have pretty much anything there. But uh, yeah, it will be Syndra here today. Yeah, now, talking about that mid lane matchup, right? You were just saying in your own experience, like, Silas can be pretty oppressive. You take a look at the mid 2v2, and it's kind of weird. Trundle Syndra, like in theory that works well, actually actually pretty nicely. You hit level 6, you just shred their resistances yep. with Trundle ulti, and you just eat them uh, with the Syndra. You just hit your outplay combo, the R button, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, farewell. But in terms of proactivity, there's going to be so much onus here on Raze and get back. And I've been saying this entire split. We saw Raze come into the lineup, and the development of the Direwolves that has, has meant a lot of their success is give him proactivity. On the Karthus game, it's rough. You pick him Lee Sin and he's styling on everyone. He has E-Flash combos with a Silas that he wants to open up the map for. This is a potential big game to be started around the mid two versus two. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, excited to see how this roster does as well today. On the flip side, Die Wars also the only game today. Um, obviously all the preparation this week, you'd have to think would uh, go into that. And yeah, obviously very important game for both, two, of, both of these two teams, you know. Um, direct competitors mm -hmm. into this one. And uh, as we get into game, we do have Cyclone joining us. Hello, hello. Uh, I was asked by Rusty to ask you whether you're feeling sleepy today. I don't know what the context behind that is. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit short on sleep when I was at the training house the other mm -hmm. day, but I've caught up now. We're okay. all good. Perfect. All right, let's let's uh, let's get onto this uh, this roster here, because we have Chan Chuan coming in, obviously, today. Um, talk to me about this player. Yeah, so um, I'm actually not super, super uh, confident on what his history is exactly, but mm -hmm. I know he's got some LPL experience, yep. um, and he plays like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I'm actually, I'm actually. That's kind of funny because obviously we were at a time where we were both on Chiefs, and I think he was in the OPL at that time. I think you coached me when I laned against Chen Shuan. Okay. Yeah. I, I wouldn't <laughs> which remember is, it, but yeah, yeah, which is funny. It's um, so possible. Yeah. So like LPL style, like what does that mean? Like just hyper aggressive. He's going to be another one in the lineup, just forcing plays to happen. Yeah, I mean, he's just like when he when he sees an opportunity and he goes, "You've stepped, you've stepped into Over my territory." Line, yeah. Like, you're gonna know about it real fast because your screen's gonna go grey. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, exciting stuff. Maybe a bit of a banger to ensue. And talk to me about you guys uh, in terms of the weekend. Like coming into this one, you and Dials are your one uh, point behind here currently, and obviously split the head-to-head. -head, but holistically, like what is what is the best outcome? What's the moon in the camp? Like what is this weekend going to be for AV? Well, the best outcome is three zero. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and we're and we're like fully prepared to make that happen. Um, obviously, it depends on how the guys actually play, mm -hmm. but like we've. You know, we're not like saying, oh, we're going to sack one game and focus on two. Like, we think we can take them all, for sure. And how has it just been, like, going back onto the challenge one, or, or the fact that, like, how is it integrating a player this late into the split, you know? Because we're talking about Draku, obviously, which is, like, one thing, but it seems like this is more of, like, a permanent mainstay of the team. Yeah, I mean, in integrating a new player is always tricky. Oh. That's a big one. Um, big chunk. Just the tip. Yeah, but they... W w I'm actually surprised that Dialwolves chose to focus on Shock because, mm -hmm. like, normally, kind of like a good default strat when you have a new player come into a team uh, is if you think that maybe the team's not comfortable with a lot of their champion pool, you could just ban some stuff out. Yeah, obviously just hit decided, on the sub. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But they obviously think they can't do that here or that it's, you know, like Shock is high value or something. So it, I guess from our point of view, it's just making sure we have, like, a thing, a style that we can do with them that's going to work. They know what their job is. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, we don't have to rely on them understanding too many nuances of, like, the way that we want to play as a whole. Um, and Chen Chuan's, like, he's a pretty good player, so a lot of that can just be intuited based on the game state. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last question for me, I want to uh, talk about, you mentioned, like, Shock. That was five bans, leverage, and Talia gone as well. Like, the mid-champion pool has taken a bit of a hit here. Syndra is not someone we've seen in a while. Like, is he well-versed on the pick? Obviously, one of those, it's one of those, like, mages that every mid laner can play, but confidence levels going up against Get Back here? It's just, like, a staple. He's kind of always played it. Um, so it's not an issue for us to have him on that at all. Okay. Perfect. Well, we'll let you go, and, uh, yeah, best of luck today. Awesome. Cheers. And the man certainly hasn't lied. We're only level two. Chen Chuan is proxed two aftershocks. He's now walking in yeah. uh, for another combo here. Q off cooldown, throws it at <laughs> enemy. Um. Greg is doing bot crab, and he's like, come here. Where are you going? Still walking forwards. Yeah, it was literally now level three. Had the shield. And he keeps running at the bottom lane. Um, in terms of resources, how's he doing? Well, seems okay. He's down to about half HP now. Raze is potentially looking at the bottom lane, but I think it's more of Chen Chuan just throws out yet another dredge line yeah. into the bottom lane, and maybe he'll be able to react. But yeah, we'll be Gragas just recalling here, looking for his first back. Because even thinking about mentality, for like Dire Wolves, like in this situation, they are winning. They push the lane in, like Gragas is already bot side, but like this is a player you don't expect. His jungler is doing Raptors topside. He's still hooking in, and you're kind of thinking about it like, okay, what, like, what is going on? Why is he hard forcing these trades so much? And yeah, I was talking about it on the OCS yesterday, like just the, the confidence play coming into super weak, best of five, like you're getting towards the gauntlet. Just, yeah. Yeah, start swinging, start swinging early and get in your opponent's head. Absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, three games to play over the weekend is 50% uh, more League of Legends than normal. And uh, I, I figure Chance One would be not too aimless to that concept as there is a million games played yeah. in the LPL. Support speaking just of which matching each other right now. Yeah, Who's even with that knowledge and seeing Totoro, he was like, still look at mid lane and see oh. if I can find the hook. Yeah, 100 percent Ooh, flank top side though. He's gonna find Chippies. Oh, 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 oh tries to follow with a flash. E does not connect onto Chippies. Opens up too much distance with his own, and he'll just back away. Uh, look for the old Shushe combo. E backwards yep, into yep. the flash, but uh, unfortunately a little bit too late. The distance slightly too great, and uh, yeah, the gank is not gonna work there. So Chippies. First game of playing top lane in a couple of weeks here, and uh, is the recipient of the wraparound in Raze. Can you believe it's been nine years since the reign of Sushi? Yeah, since he was just... Hold, hold that. Uh-oh, yeah, Chip is getting caught out here. Hook shots back to the tower. Raze mm -hmm. chucks out the barrel roll. Oh, Ooh, flash out for Bayer Panther. Gonna get the shield here from the passive. Now he's a bit overextended underneath Mirror and the teleport coming out from the shock. He'll take him out right there. Power unleashed and Raze now trying to make it down the river, as Get Back is going to find him here as well. Ooh, will okay. be first, but Chance One flashes away, gets taken out. Guncrab now overextended. On. He's going to be stunned. Here comes the teleport, now putting out the damage in return. Counter teleport coming in from the Dire Wolves. Instant root comes out onto Chippies. Hookshot back to tower by Pamper Chasing. And cross map, four TPs get flown to either side lane. AB just uh, trying to save their members. Top side successful, bottom cannot say the same as Chen Chuan does fall down, but. Yeah, gold lead. 
At the end of the day, just going to be a kill traded back and forth. Of course, first blood gold goes to shock. He's able to pick that one up, so it does rest in AV's hands. But uh, given some of the games we've seen recently, super slow starts, this one is uh, yeah, this one's quite the opposite. Getting frisky. Yeah, we'll see how that happened. I imagine it's the dredge line. Uh, yes, waves not quite hit. Q buffered through the hook, so Totoro plays this incredibly well and shield up. Guncrab throws everything, but Braum is just so goddamn tanky. Very nice communication there. Double flash forward, last two auto attacks, and passive pop means that Guncrab has to run away. And of course, after that, TP's come down and everybody's fine. But uh, yeah, this is a hard force on the bottom side from Chenchuan continuing, and he has been punished now with a kill. Yeah, and, you know, as much as we've been joking about it, you know, like, just the hyper aggression coming in from the support, you do wonder, at, like, at what point do you have to adapt to, your, like, region team and who you're facing, right? Because, yeah. like, there is a definitely, um, like, a vibe difference between regions, and sometimes yeah. it doesn't always translate in your first couple games, and we've seen that so many times, you know, I've cast, like, my first year of imports in, in multiple different regions now, and mm -hmm. there's always an adjustment period. And even, like, if you're just a player at home, you can feel, to a smaller degree, that adjustment period, when like you go on a smurf, right? Mm -hmm. Like I like I am a challenger player that cannot win in platinum. Yeah, like right. I lose every game because it's like it comes with a, a set of assumptions, right? And Chen Chuan's yes. like, okay, I'm going to have jungle prior. Guncrab's going to step up for this trade, so I can and, do this. And so yes, yes, I can do this because I know the, the the expected result. But when that is not the case, it just looks to be like overforcing. This is a trundle still pathing towards topside, and he's just been hooking off cooldown basically, and now. Mm -hmm. CS lead isn't the greatest, but it's a kill over. Cull already bought, so uh, Katsuri, when he pops that 100 CS mark, is going to be a little bit further ahead of Guncrab, and yeah, isn't is it looking like the play right now? What would you say Oceania's like identity is, right? Because we talk about team identity all the time, but do you think there's like an underlying like regional identity? Because everyone looks at China and it's like the meme of hyper aggression, which is not necessarily true, but games are played at a very fast pace, right? Yeah. Korea historically has been a generally slower region, but that doesn't necessarily mean games are slow, but game time is maybe longer. Um, I would say uh, that you kind of have to, like, you, you get checked on things. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily, like, super scrappy, super slow. I know a bunch of OPL players look to Korea. Hold this by a Panther. It's going to be ultimatum issued to buy a Panther. That's the turn around and fight. Goes, gets a good chains off, but, yeah, Tactical Sweep will finish mm -hmm. him off. Very nice gank there. Preparation. Mira gets behind. Nautilus in trouble again. Gets a stun down. Insta Rip fishing back. a combo when he's just straight up dead. Guncrab flashes oh, away. He's stunned as well. Makes it back to the tower, but at the cost of a lot of resources. Yeah, and this game is just going on alternate side lanes. Chippies gets another gank on the top side. 0-2 Aatrox, and same can be said for the Nautilus right now. Chippies does have enough time to buy some plating. No opponent to defend that one, whereas Guncrab is looking to defend his turret. Mid lane is getting active, though. Silas potentially roaming bot side, but we'll just place some water back away. Yeah, it should be uh, probably just going to... Wow, Ruler's signature is... Uh... God awful. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, I it's not first before. language, right? Yeah, so, like, fair. Like, but it's, it's also your name, you know? So you, at a certain point, you write it a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Fair maybe enough. Just had to, maybe you should have written it. Yeah, I, don't I, don't I don't know. I'm just saying. Um, still, yeah, two more kills into the bottom lane. Both going on to Katsuri as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, good start here for the Dials, at least in the bottom side. But, yeah, you were saying you like you get checked more yeah, in Yeah, right? There's, there's a lot of, like, uh, like I'm willing to try out plays. Like, LCK, when you take a look at a game, like, the reason it slows down is because the assumptions are there and everybody's happy to handshake. They should make this play, so we should defend whether or not they do the thing at the end of the day. O says, how many times have you taken a look at the top laner? They're getting dove, and he's like, all right, like 2v1, let's go. Yeah. Like, weak side of the map, if I trade, it's good. Like, that's fine. There's mm. so much, like, you have to prove that you can do the thing yeah, before for me to let respect. you do the thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it comes from, I think, like, in all honesty, like, culturally, Australia, like, very sporty, like, sports is so sure. embedded, and there's so much of a, like, yeah, like competitive aspects. You grow up playing sports, all that sort of stuff. It bleeds into solo queue. You're looking for big out plays, and yeah, it bleeds into competitive play as well. Absolutely. So I think it's such an interesting conversation. And uh, yeah, you know, and bringing that back to uh, Chen Chuan, like he will have to at some point, like you know, adapt and, and figure that out, you know, um, while teams will also figure him out at the same time.
And so taking stock of what's happened right now. Hold that thought. Another hold <laughs> yeah, on the bottom side. Dredge line again. Multi Apparently lands. here comes Miru charging in at the speed of light. Chucks out the pillar. Forces the flash from Turner Road. Good crab comes in with a killer instinct. Uh, Catherine Rain Ooh. is good, but it's not enough damage to finish him off. Now raise the flash body slam does connect this time around. Pass. Throws out the ultimate. Oh, we'll find two in the bottom lane. Diorbs come up trumps. Yeah, Totoro feeling confident to go back in for the extra auto attack and AV's bottom lane getting punished time and again four deaths between them right now and this time the flash body slam absolutely lands. Cancelled base as well so Miru cops a little bit of extra time. Direwolves, Katsuri is set up for a monster game here for the first day of Super Week. Yeah, this is uh, concerning for sure. And mm -hmm. once again, it's start off a uh, initiate this time coming in courtesy of Chan Chuan with yeah. Miro behind him, feeling like it's a good trade. But like, think about the CC. It is all from the Nautilus. Trundle needs to be in melee range to be effective. And the gap was just way too big. So you use all your buttons, Totoro blocks everything, and you cannot get onto Katsuri despite Gunkrab. He committed to the play, ulti into the back lines, mm -hmm. but Direwolves just absolutely have their number. The counter attack with a Braum lane, with a Zaya lane, and a Gragas second to the play is enormous. And that's exactly what you see. Very easy cleanup now. I was uh, saying earlier, 21 CS on the cull. That's popping soon, and he already has an Essence Reaver. This Zaya is going to be unbelievably big. I mean, that's 2K. already a 2k <laughs> advantage. Yeah, in the bottom lane without cool being cashed in yet. I mean, this is like... You know, perfect farm, about to farm past the minute um, in bottom lane. He's been able to collect three kills on top of that. Like, this Zaya's gonna hit, you know, mm. online status, like, mid game. Like, already. Already. Like, it, like it's now. happened, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the big thing to note is the flip side, right? Like, Chippies, 1.5k. And uh, when you kind of take a look at it, like, Camille, one of the best split pushes to attack a team fight. You get a flank at CC, you get to isolate your target. But thinking about how these games ge generally progress, Side laners need more time. It's easy to play 4 1 League of Legends. Your AD carries big, so you just walk at a turret, yep. you hit it, you look for a team fight, you win. And uh, AV in this position, they need to stem the bleeding. Chippies will need time to get towards the Triforce. He's already paid the executioner's tax. He'll need maybe two items, whereas Katsuri is just online much earlier. So Direwolves right now, they know that. They're being proactive, looking for the Rift Herald. They, they are willing to take a fight right now if AV are going to give it to them. All that gold from the bottom lane now moving up to this Herald. I don't know if anyone really wants to step up into this one because you're walking into a Zaya, which is uh, generally not pleasant. And this should be Herald going down now to Zaya Wolves. Is uh, the duo lane from AV actually pushing up, placing down a deep ward here? They will spot Dire Wolves. There is a potential. Yeah, okay. It's going to summon Herald far back. I was going to say potential. They spot yeah. down ward for Chen Chuan to perhaps uh, interrupt with long range, well, like depth charge. Yeah, like even like Trundle is the scariest one. Non committal. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, if you're in pillar range, like, that is just the freest cancel of all time. So, uh, yeah, not efficient usage when you chuck it so far away from the turret, but incredibly safe there to guarantee the charges. Unfortunately, after 14 minutes, so no plating picked up, but they will be breaking this turret to get first brick gold regardless. Yeah, not going to be unhappy with that outcome uh, whatsoever. And uh, Katsuri as well will also just be the absolute beneficiary of the tower local gold. So that's another 250 gold in his pockets. And uh, I believe that's a call also completed. Yeah, he's probably going to have like, what, 1.2k 1, 1. gold? If we could flick over to the gold charts. I mean, like that was 300 plus 300. <laughs> <laughs> okay, times okay. two. Uh, he's basically at a second item. He's like 500 yep. gold off. Probably just completion. He has over, over double the gold of Chen Chuan. That's gross. That is gross. So many times the split, we've become so close to the double figure. Yeah, um, but, but never not quite. quite. There. So maybe today's the day. And then we'll actually get to name it after somebody. It could be it. Um, Raze was the last one, I believe. But he didn't quite, uh, quite yeah. get it. Has he found an AD carrier? I remember like in the first time, it was like he's searching for an opponent. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe, uh, maybe and then the second time they the came guy. to him. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Katsuri might be him. Could be the one. Could be the one. Boots 2 is going to be the purchase here. Incredibly efficient item rather than sitting on components. So I'm expecting the IE secondary. It is kind of a new age build. It means that feathers do an incredible amount of damage. Yeah. Your burst on Zyre is deceptively high. It's kind of. The feathers are hard to see in a team fight, especially when it's like Featherstorm Q, W proc means a couple yeah. of auto comes down in quick succession. and. An E with Essence Reaver, IE, flat AD values, rips back. That is basically one-shot territory for anybody that isn't a tank. So, yeah, certainly going to be a scary one. 
funny how the value of some abilities goes up in the chaos of fights sometimes. Yeah. Top plane, Chippy is in this one versus one. Now a two versus one. Bam Bam is going to see this. Gets knocked away and will just be a finish off auto attack here by Chippy. Gets mm -hmm. himself his second kill as well. Yeah, getting to uh, dangerous territory on the Camille. I was saying earlier, needs time if Direwolves are going to do the air dragon on bottom side, pick up a second one. Isn't the greatest, it's not an Infernal, not an Earth, but Firepanther has to respect, and in this case he doesn't, so he gets very swiftly punished by Miro and Chippies. Yeah, definitely not going to dislike this one as well. Katsu is definitely going to like it in team fights, as uh, this is Predator. a fast Gragas moving his way towards the bottom lane. Going to be spotted out by AV, but this tower is pretty much already gone. It's on its last legs now, and will be finished off. The 100, uh, 175 gold in the bank there for Katsuri. And this will be bottom lane, uh, continue to push up. Probably going to see, uh, yeah, Chen one and a Gun Crab return to the bottom lane and will back off themselves to spend yet another 1,400 <laughs> gold. <laughs> He's almost right there, Ed. That's, uh, that's Ruffy. Chop top side. What is he? 2.6. He's actually getting there. That second kill pushes in a huge wave as well. And you can see, uh, Dire Wolves. This is something that's hard to spot in competitive games. But think about what Bio Panther just did in the last minute. Pushes in topside, overextends, dies, gets punished for it, and then deploys topside again to hit three creeps, to reset, to yeah. walk bottom side again, right? This is uh, somewhat a little bit of lack of planning here from Direwolves, and Biopanda's going to cop it in a great deal here. 30 CS lead explodes to 50 and the extra kill going over, so it's Black Cleaver done to free ass boots. Got the Triforce and the Tiamat and the Execution, as this side lane is going to be very difficult to hold for the Aatrox. Yeah, and Camille's basically got like the kill a truck starter kit, you know, yep. completed uh, executioners as well. And it's 1v1 matchup. Like, once Camille gets a couple kills over you, like, it varies on matchup. But there's a certain point where Camille will just kill you over and over and over again, like, yeah. under tower. And it's just like an R click, you know? Mm -hmm. There's like nothing you can really do about it. Um, I I'd say we're probably like half item away from that point. So, this will be something that Dire Wolves need to think about shortly, sooner rather than later. Um, on the flip side, though, yeah. mid lane's just been farming away. Haven't seen a whole lot of the mid lane apart from Shock's rotations. Um, and it's the AV carry that's really big in this one. We have this invade coming out from Die Wars. Mm -hmm. Stealing away the red buff. You saw Guncrab posturing over that one, but as soon as it was contested, there's no way they can win a fight. So backs away. Katsuri, the recipient of that one. It's also important to note that this is a six, or sorry, five TP game. Katsuri's is just yeah. popped to get himself into mid lane, but. Uh, if any fight is to break around the AD carry position, every side lane can just rock up to the play again. We saw it earlier in both sides of the map, in all honesty. Now Dire Wolves. Ooh, Ooh Raze looks for it. Okay, Hook is on, though. Try. Chance one will find the, uh, the support actually on the front line. Turner will jump away to Katsuri and get away from this. And uh, after all of that, a lot of resource. That was a, uh, a flash, a heal, and ignite from AV response uh, a flash and uh, a teleport actually for Katsuri. Yeah, and I'm curious whether the ward in the banana bush around red buff actually spots the Gragas. Because think about from Shock's perspective, we have God View. Like just above the screen right now, he wouldn't have had oh, yeah. a complete vision over the wall there. He just sees a Gragas flying over like just <laughs> boot, like belly first and he's just like, oh shit, get the hell out of that one. Yeah, way. instant flash. Yeah, reaction time's on point and absolutely saves his life because that wasn't like the, the old school old man hands Gragas combo. That was <laughs> ulti already flying. Yep. So if he connects, you go flying back into the wall. That's one shot potential. Yeah, certainly uh, a, a quick decision there for the mid laner. Yeah, could have gone uh, very wrong very fast. But uh, yeah, well played to shock in the end. And we're cresting the 20 minute mark, which means that Baron Nasha is on his way. And uh, Chen Chuan is pushing up here with the rest of AV. Got some counter warding coming in from Mira as well. And uh, Katsuri will make his way to this mid lane. His raise now in a bit of an ARAM situation mm. by Pamper. Caught in between wanting to rotate, thinking about going back to bottom lane. Bottom lane is now pushed out for him, so he really doesn't have a home. Um, yeah. He's just kind of walking from lane to lane, looking for a place to belong. And uh, if you were reading Reddit this morning, taking a look at Chippy's lane right now, I'm sure you've watched the LS video and be like, this is probably ample time to freeze. Oh, Not going to be the case, though. Fight top side. Get shot this time, and no up. flash today. So that will be a kill. Stops him in the dredge line. Double kill for Katsuri. And uh, yeah, two cheeky kills just on Baron spawn means that pings. Immediately onto the blasting plant. Everyone but get back <laughs> makes it over the wall. Lucky he has an E button very soon. Maybe he just wants to shepherd away the jungler as well. Miru does have flash. He is a level down, so smite fight. Probably a 70-30 at best, but maybe looking for it anyway. 
blind. You're going to increase those ratios even more for his ward over the wall, down to 5,000 HP. Two members now Ooh. coming in for Dire Wars. That's a low health Silas. That's going to be a kill over to Miru. Suddenly, this is not looking so crazy from Avant. TP. Teleport also coming in. Dire Wolves still half committed to this Baron. And a reset comes through. AV. Are they going to try this themselves? No. Chippy does not try and stop that reset. And Dire Wolves will back away. Yeah, they uh, pay the price there. Get back a little bit too ambitious. Trying his best for Totoro. Got him the stand behind me over the wall, but it's eaten alive by Guncrab. He falls down, and all of a sudden, Chippy can equalize the numbers with the teleport. So, AV do very well to hold in, hold on there in a very difficult situation. That was almost perfect setup for the Direwolves. Contesting that topside vision, you get the wards, you find two picks, and easy as you like, step up to the Baron plate. Air Dragon's going to be the consolation prize here for AV. They wrestle some control back, get somewhat of an objective, but. Our first real dragon of the game is going to spawn. Yeah, Mountain comes through, and uh, probably would prefer those two clouds to be actually Mountains, and that would have been a Baron take right there for Direwolf. Yeah. Not the case, though. It's not the cookie crumbles, and we're now 22 minutes in, and AV stopping that has suddenly just prolonged this game significantly now yeah. for them, which is exactly what they want. But the big thing to note is that Chippies is the power point, and they had to use his teleport, mm -hmm. right? Like, yes, in the moment, like, you stop Baron, Absolutely great play. Like, the game isn't over. Like, Baron buff not hitting your Nexus all of a sudden. But, uh, yeah, Direwolves can, albeit screwing it up the first time, set up once again. And Chippies has a much harder time answering. This bottom lane now pushed very mm. deep in. He probably has, like, 30 seconds to, like, a minute and a half before he's whacking on the door of uh, Aatrox's turret. And he's going to have to be very conscious of how far he walks away from this Baron buff and how long he can stay away before a team fight can erupt. Because, as you can see, Yes, there's a ward in the pit. I'm assuming Katsuri is going to be able to hit that one very soon when they step up to it. But Direwolves, they want the control. They want to start this one again, and they're looking for another fight. I mean, if Direwolves get themselves into a situation where they can really you know, levy the resources that they have in that AD carry, then it's suddenly a, a very different fight. 5 0 1, two and a half items. Um, that being said, Direwolves only about 1,000 gold ahead of AV when we're looking at uh, team to team. It's just a lot of it is concentrated on that ADC. Uh, now in the bottom lane, and you can see a lot of the golds have gone over to Chippies, and yeah. he's able to do so much in his bottom lane. Pushes by the Pumper away from the tower with two Kafta groups remaining. Takes tower shots, and that's still enough for Aatrox to be like, nah, I don't want any of this. I'm assuming the Aatrox has a reasonable amount of gold. Went back and picked up the tabbies, but uh, yeah, 900, okay, can get another component. But Chippies has hit that break point, right? You mentioned it earlier, he's like half an item away. He's now completed the Ravenous Hydra, has the Triforce, and another 1.1k in the bank, yep. so... This is a very scary prospect. Three level lead over the Aatrox right now. In terms of uh, defense in the side lane, Bio Panther has very few options, and a lot of it is just on the other side of the map, speeding up the game. Baron will do just that. They're looking to start this one off. Yeah, starved AV of vision. This has been hit for a while. Yeah, down to half already. Here comes Chen Chuan. He's got two members behind him from AV. Miro is stepping up to the plate, has flash. Ooh. They can get vision. Face down the ward for a bit of a flash there. There they make go. it over down to 1500. Flash the wall of AV in the pit. Trying to steal! And AV walk away of the Baron, but can they win the fight? Vibe Hunter in the pit here. Totoro steps up, and Katsuri is still putting out the herd. Rips back and gets a triple. Somehow Miro gets over the wall. Baron goes their way, but you cannot deal with the Zaya. 8 and 0. Featherstorm is just so safe. Cleaning up everybody. No Baron buff to push with, but they will push nonetheless. One member facing off against two. I think Guncrab's going to have a tall order to defend this one. Yeah, at best he can just chip away at this wave, but this is going to be at least a tower in the mid lane. And Katsuri being awake here, along with Biopanther, going to be in great condition to at least take two towers. Top tower. Uh, the wave is a little ways away. It's probably just going to be a jungle clear out here. But still, AV getting that yeah. steal there is a huge deal. And I'm not, I didn't quite look at the levels. Not sure if, like, Miro is just dinged level 12 after that fight. Is level 11. 11 at the start, so negative smite here does strictly less damage. Direwolf's going to lose it over the wall. Chippies does so much hurt over the wall. Gets to 400 as it gets smote away. And, uh, yeah, team fight probably went the way you expect. When a team is stealing, everybody flies over the wall. As you have a huge combo, it's hard to win the fight at the back end, but... Uh, yeah, stalling it out. You have to take a look at it. This is two Barons that have been fumbled for Dire Wars, right? They're yep. in such a commanding position. Zaya is still monumentally, like, yeah. huge. Eight and zero hasn't died. 700 gold shutdown, but unable to push this game forward. And the more time Chippies has, the more useful he's going to get as this game goes on. 
approaching the Flame Horizon mark. AV certainly keeping themselves in this one. And ultimately, that is just how pivotal good Baron control can be. You know, a lot of the time we'll see teams just check out of it and just be like, nope, you know, like it's clear they're going to get it. By the yeah. time we go up there, we're not even going to try, you know. And I think that's goes back to what you were saying about like region, you know, you've got yeah. to prove it. Can if you, you don't, you don't Aaron? we'll walk up and steal it. Apparently not. Yeah, uh, yeah that's mine. Just yoinks it over the wall, gets himself a gargoyle as well. It's a very effective item when you don't have that much gold, you can see. As soon as a team falls behind, jungle CS skews, support gold sort of skews, as you get less access to like spell these procs or yeah, relic shield yeah. procs. So having just pseudo tankiness in the gargoyle for at least a couple of seconds when the fighter ups is very useful. Actually going for the full support build as well, just going redemption to keep his carries alive. Uh, we have multiple teleports coming up. In fact, four teleports will be available in about 20 seconds from now as Chippy's is about to get his. Speaking of, he is taking the top tower. Dragon B attempted here by Die Wars and Objective. I don't think AV will really be trying yeah. to contest. Um, and speaking about cultural differences, you know, like the, the whole um, teleport. God, that. Just seeing Rule of Signature, man, it gets me every single time now that I've seen it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's just like you say one thing bad about someone, and all the lads come in. You know, like everybody's going to be teleporting to the play. I think that's yeah, yeah, like yeah. Australia, UK. Like, what did you say about <laughs> my mate? <laughs> the lads come in. <laughs> <laughs> Your boys, my boys, bot lane. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Could be it. Could be the one. Now. Winning team against Baron, hard to push, so a uh, bit of a lull right now. Taking a look at the item spikes, decap actually done for Shock, has the double M pen towards that one. But uh, yeah, Katsuri, four items plus the defensive tool and the more completed, so very effective at dealing with a Syndra when she can't really miss her combo. Stun lands, hits you with the ulti. You do have outplay potential with this Featherstorm, but uh, probably a very good situation right now. And Map actually gets flipped. You can see AV kind of taking a look at it, and it's like, okay, yes, Chippies may make some progress topside. You can chip away at an inner turret, but if they can get the matchup into bio pens, that they want that kill potential, right? A single kill on the side lane means numbers advantage, which means they can walk and maybe get the Baron control back, because despite not actually getting the Baron, Direwolves have played the last eight minutes of this game in AV's north jungle, like taking away the red buff, mm -hmm. having so much vision control, and you can see they want to do it again, but Chippies is kind of the only uh, spanner in the works. Yeah, hopefully at Inhibitor Turret, this is where Biopump should be able to hold his own. I think Sterex is going to help immensely, yeah. um, stopping himself from getting bursted out. Plus, Ninja Tappies, the, com the combination of those two items should be enough to be a brick wall for Chippies. Won't mean that over time we won't be able to just erode that turret down, but like as a, as a stopgap, pretty good. And that can allow Katsuri the rest of the team to do the work that they need to. Um, so for now, it is this game being prolonged here out from that Baron play. Since it was only on one member, kind of difficult just to you know push out, especially in combat. Prowess and power, four v four, probably not going to win. So yeah, trying to just extend this game out. Mm -hmm. Certainly is the case. Couple of key summoners up and available again. Last time Baron was being contested, Chippy's had to use his TP. That is now up, but in the hands of Direwolves, Razor's Flash is probably the most impactful. I believe in every Baron uh, fight they've got themselves into, he hasn't had that summoner available. Yeah. It's been like, get back going over the wall. He throws the cast to throw away the jungler and secure the Baron, but it's a little bit too early. They don't want to commit to the play, so now Direwolves. Third time's a charm here. Baron spawning in 40 seconds. AB feeling a little bit more adventurous, posturing forwards to get that control. And you can see, bottom lane is uh, is holding, and uh, the minion wave is being trimmed before it hits the tower and by a pamper. Not a single scratch on the bottom lane in hip tower, so uh, doing pretty well for himself down there. Top lane, Shock's going to just get another injection of gold farming in the side lane, basically uh -huh. waiting for the next objective, which will be Baron in 15 seconds, so the setup is already there. Yeah, Direwolves have now found themselves in this uh, position two times in a row where they're getting control top side. Before that pink ward dies in the pit, right? They don't have a pink ward in the pit yet, so they don't actually know it's there. I believe the last tick of Razor's sweeper would have spotted that one if he was paying attention, but all of this vision is kind of moot if they just know you're not hitting the Baron. There's no reason to face check right now, and thank you, Observers, toggling the vision. They're dealing with Midway, probably going to walk back towards the pit on this play right now, but if that pink ward doesn't die, then there's just no threat on the Baron whatsoever. There we go.
<laughs> we <laughs> found it. it. We got it. Taking out the control ward. Now, third time's the charm. Didn't see what happened there. I literally, like, seven seconds yeah. away, it was like a full health tower. We look back and it's like at 25% HP. Mm -hmm. But Diawars are going to kick this one off once again. Can they make it happen? Because Chen Swan is walking up. Near over the wall, has flashed once again. They're going to turn onto Fight the Nautilus, on. but Good Crab is here. Turner are blocking a lot of that Redemption. damage. Ooh. But that was a huge stun coming in from Shock. They're just completely disengaged from Diawals entirely. Now the 1v1 in the bottom lane. Meanwhile, Chen Swan goes into his stopwatch. Stun. Turner on top Enormous. of him, gets a stun out. Great stun coming in from Shock. Chen Swan will still die, and Turo is somehow still alive. And I'm surprised AV don't commit to the fight. You can see the call is play for Chippies. Just give him time in the side lane. But that was two back-to-back -back monstrous scatter the weeks from Shock, and potentially a one-team fight. A third one almost lands with the Katsuri. This turret dead to rights, so though. Chippies gets the work done. Yeah, still takes it out. Biopanfer now exposed and really has to wait for his team to catch up to defend this inhibitor. So it did work out in the end. Bunch of Force of Wills coming in as well from Shock. Just interrupting those recalls was a big deal. Uh, has a long range on that ability, so was able to interrupt some recalls at great range. And AV will get themselves an opened up inhibitor, and Baron mm -hmm. is still up. Yep, still up. They have vision control of the area, Dire Wolves. And straight back mid lane, what that priority? Actually, in uh, useful Dragon Spawn Mountain, so... If anybody can sneak that one away, obviously nobody's deploying to that side of the map when Baron's up, but uh, Chibis can just eat that one while the rest of his team can dissuade another Baron attempt and could be good, but Diables giving them no Four time times to the up. Let's see if it works. Totoro over the wall, it's down to half already. Miru stepping up to the wall, has flash, now has vision, hops the secured wall. It. Down to 95 HP, secured by Rays this time. AV looking for this fight. Totoro backing away, turning onto Chippies, goes into his stopwatch. Rays trying to find his angle into this Katsuri's fight, gets dead. onto the back line. Chippies assassinates the back, but dies himself. Now four versus four, three versus three. Rays chasing down onto Shock, flashes it away. Meanwhile, Miru trading off against Get Back, who will take him down, and Die Wolves slowly inch out the Ooh. fight. Almost, because Raze almost dies to shock, and it will be a four for two. And somehow, given Bio Panther's just been getting punished in the side lane, he is the difference in the team fight. Yes, Smite comes through. Raze finally secures his team, the Baron, but Aatrox just slapping down the back line. Shock has to run away. Guncrab was dead very early, as was Katsuri. Now, Dire Wolves approaching on the in here. Baron has been a long time coming. Shock 1v2 looking for the defense. Should be able to take this inhibitor without too much of a contest, uh, contest here. Uh, actually choosing to back away. Uh, respawns on uh, yeah. support and bottom lane fairly short, but didn't want to stick around for it. So at the very least, we'll get themselves the second uh, Mountain Dragon of this game. Next one will be uh, Elder Dragon. Yeah. So now just uh, opens up in his for both teams. And I'd love to take another look at the fight because a couple of key things happen, right? Like Chippy's getting the assassinate onto Katsuri. Like that's an AD carry who at the time didn't have the GA that he does now, but Featherstorm was there. Like when were the cooldowns used? Like how is yeah. uh, Camille getting that one hit onto the back line? Uh, but yeah, Dire Wolves, it took four times. They finally got themselves a Baron, and they do have it on three members. So uh, Aatrox being one of them means that they do have it on all of the lanes they'll want to play through. Mm -hmm. This isn't a 1-3-1. One, one. It is a 4-1, so only two lanes realistically need it. And uh, two lanes will absolutely have it here for this setup. Yeah, absolutely, because Chippy's just uh, somehow assassinates and died himself. But honestly, yeah. a good trade. If you get the 1-for-1 one you know? one on like a 9-1, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's good. Zaya, that's it. No worries. Still, that Baron being secured there, if uh, ever so slight, down to 95% HP before the smite coming in from Raze was a little bit dicey, I'm going to say, with the rest of AV in the pit. But hey, secure is a secure. And with the rest of the team now stepping up to the inhibitor, we'll be able to take this one away. And uh, we'll probably look to back away and move top lane as the wave has been set up. Yeah. Bye bye, Pamper. Mm -hmm. And uh, not a lot of ranged wave clear here. Syndra being the best, but against Baron, magic users don't really deal with it. Uh, all too great, so hard for AV to actually dissuade any sort of these pushes. They don't have a Casio W, they don't have Kate Trap, so Direwolves is very confidently setting up. That's an ulti. Fisher comes out, zones him away, see if we can just get one member maybe on the tip of that one. Not the case. And Northern is still posturing for this one. Yeah. Minion Wave's in the way, making it difficult for Direwolves just to straight walk up and take the inhibit, but they will knock it down eventually. And AV now down two inhibitors. Again, stepping up, Chippy's low, doesn't have the Garden Angel, get but they get rid of this one, this is a big deal. That should be the disengage. Very close to the chain landing onto Chippy's, that would have been a yeah. team fight. Uh, immediately, Ruler 
goes back to base <laughs> once again. Uh, but yeah, that was the perfect play for Dire Wars there. They get two in here, still have the Baron, get to reset, lost nothing, used nothing as well. Key ultimates, key flashes, still available. So uh, just the Brawl Malt was used, open up the base, and AV still backs against the wall. Have been the entirety of this game, and they've been stalling so well. But now that uh, they're kind of stuck in their base, Chippies doesn't have space to play with. He can't be the side lane threat if he can't leave and play in the side lane. So Dire Wars still looking to pressure this one. Yeah, and I feel like we're probably going to get yet another Baron in this game, which will be uh, Baron number three. It is up in two minutes from now. And the inhibitor really left standing is the bottom lane here from AV. And this is now a full item Zaya. Capped out. Could not get any stronger. Mm -hmm. AV looking to perhaps mount the defense in the bottom lane. Just clearing out these super minions as they come in. Interesting setup right now. Diables with four members mid, only one in the side lane. Just trying to hold this mid priority so that when the wave crashes, they have the shorter track over. They can just walk through the choke between the base just outside those gates there. And I like the tools they've got available. If Totoro lands a Q onto someone like that Nautilus and he's stepping too far forward, that is just zero commitment needed for Katsuri to auto attack him a couple of times and you have kill threat already. So Tara does get sacked here for AV The Maybe the game is to defend inside the base. Totoro with a clutch shield there denies all of that damage from Shock. Now bottom lane finally on the menu here for Dire Wars. Get back as long as the rest of the team Hook. can... Ooh, right in between. We'll be able to knock down the turret while his team is distracting. Now onto the last inhibitor, oh, AV. On. Looking for the engage. Lands depth charge onto Katsuri. Good stun as well out from Shock. Gun can crab. he finish off the gun crab in the back line? Flashes all the way through. Now jumps out. Fire Panther on this front line. Chasing him back, but the AD carry is dead. Chance one, trying to escape from this one. Great change onto Shock as well. It looks like Die Wars have just done it. Chasing down onto Mirror and the rest of AV. We'll be able to finish off the inhibitor. And that will be the recall back to base for Die Wars looking to line up the kill. Next is turret one. Gonna be the target right now. Big stun from Shock. He does reasonable damage, but GA still there for Katsuri. He's the man to watch. Four members still here. Get back. Chunk very low, but we'll have the healing out. Miro chasing down to the back line. Bad Pam's gonna finish him off, and Katsuri is just way too big and still Chippies. alive. Chippy's chasing. Get back down, but the real threat is hitting the Nexus. 38 minutes, and Dai will finally do it and take down AV. And in such a weird game, think about the early levels there. Chippy's lead was massive. Same can be said for Katsuri, but Dyer was just able to leverage that little bit better. Got to mid game, closing it out shaky, yes, but for a game that has so much playoff implications, like Jake was saying on the couch, like AV is the more catchable team of the two for the, the people down the ladder for, yeah. uh, for order, for Gravitas, and Dyer was picking up a win necessary here for them to lock themselves in. So yeah, huge game here to close this one out. Yeah, you can also take a lot away from that um for like teams and players as well, right? Because mm -hmm. like Dire Wolves, that was a messy game. That was yep. like four Baron attempts and one of them was stolen and one was a lost team fight, yep. you know? And that was like, that was very messy. On the flip side, Chance One clearly will just go for every dredge line yeah. ever. Um, and that ended up in a, what, a zero five bottom lane. Yeah. Um, and that was like a Zai just becoming out of control. Yeah, and I think like, to, to talk about Chen Shuan for a bit, like that's you, like your first game, you can see the look on his face, like far left right now, he's not happy with that performance, but there are so many moments where he entered for like a necessary play. Like the Baron contest where Shock gets those like three back-to-back -back stuns. Yeah. He just walks up, sacks himself, has the stopwatch to get like mm -hmm. a four-man knockup and, and he's starting good plays. Yes, there was so much like over-aggression. You can see this man does come from the LPL. Yeah. You can see that uh, 100% there. And yes, like early laning was rough, but I, I, I think certainly for AV cementing their roster at the back end of the split. Like, mm -hmm. this is the last week for them if they don't make it going into yeah. Gauntlet. Like, there is time. Uh, but Dyer was with the ability to punish there. They uh, eventually get the win. Katsuri, monster game. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Monster game coming out from him. For now, we're going to send it over to Nick Boy with the interview. Monster game indeed. Bio. Hello. Game number one. Yeah. Down. Super weak. Mm -hmm. It's on. Yeah. How are the nerves? Mm. I wasn't really pressured, but I felt like. I played really bad th that game and I felt like I just had to play that role and like just survive and keep Camille down that whole game. So, Do you feel like it was on you or you were being outplayed in lane or mm. what was going on? I think it was more on like my mindset getting into that game. I didn't like play to dominate my opponent. So I feel like I didn't play to how I usually play. Does getting the win then, does that help 
uh, like push your mindset into that place where you feel like you need to dominate? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think this was just like a day that I just yeah, didn't have that mindset. Well, it's good that it happened today because <coughs> you've only got the one game today. You've yeah. got two tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, tomorrow you're up against Gravitas and Bombers. Yep. Uh, how are you feeling about those? Pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. I believe you. Yeah, I'm you so are. excited. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, I think like the rest of the people here, a lot of the viewers, just impressed with the continued rise of Die Wolves mm. um, back from, you know, where you were at the end of last split. Mm-hmm. Uh, heading into the end of uh, this Super Wheat scenario, what is it like when you're coming up against a team like AV with a new support? Uh, mm. Like potentially a new spanner in the works. Mm. I think we just, like for us, we want to just keep getting more consistent because mm-hmm. I feel like our team has like on and off days and I feel like if we just keep the games clean and play to how we always play, I think we should be in a good shape for playoffs. And uh, would you prefer to have the two games today or it's better to have like, you've had the success, you can rest mm. for 24 hours then get into it tomorrow? I think I wouldn't mind either. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm <laughs> excited for you guys. The Die Wolves Rise continues holding on uh, to fourth place uh, at the moment. Congratulations on Thank the you win, so much. mate. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Side. Dredge line again. Multi-way. Apparently, here comes Miru charging in at the speed of light, chucks out the pillar, forces the flash from Turner Road. Good crab comes in with a killer instinct. Our Catherine Rain is good, but it's not enough damage to finish him off. Now, Raze, the flash body slam does connect this time around. Pass. Throws out the ultimate. Oh, we'll find two in the bottom lane. Dials come up trumps. Yeah, I'm sure you watch the LS video and be like, this is probably ample time to freeze. Well, no. Not going to be the case, though. Fight top side. It's shocked this time, and Beat no up. flash today. So that will be a kill. Stops him in the dredge line. Double kill for Katsuri. Is behind him from AV. Miro is stepping up to the plate, has flash. Ooh. They can get vision. Face down the ward for a bit of a flash there. there he makes it over down to 1500. Flash the wall of AV in the pit. Trying to steal! And AV walk away of the Baron, but can they win the fight? Viapanver in the pit here. Totoro steps up, and Katsuri is still putting out the herd. Rip back and gets a triple. Let's see if it works. Turtero over the wall, it's down to half already. Miru stepping up to the wall, has flash, now has vision, hops the wall, down to 95 HP, secured by Raze this time. AV looking for this fight, Turtero backing away, turning onto Chippies, goes into his stopwatch. Raze trying to find his angle into this fight, gets onto the back line. Chippies assassinates the back, but dies himself. Now four versus four, three versus three. Raze chasing down onto Shock, flashes it away. Meanwhile, Miro trading off against Get Back, who will take him down. Yeah, he's still there for Katsuri. He's the man to watch. Four members still here. Get Back. Chunk's very low, but we'll have the healing out. Miro chasing down to the back line. Bad Pam's going to finish him off, and Katsuri is just way too big and still Chippies. alive. Chippy's chasing Get Back down, but the real threat is hitting the Nexus. 38 minutes, and Diwals finally do it and take down AV.